Hello everyone, nice to meet you here. I'm Beijing guide Cindy Zhang. Thank you very much to the friends who give me trust and support in the past year. I wish you good health, good luck, happy life, and a prosperous career in the new year. For my new friends, there is a Chinese proverb that says it very well. Fate brings people together no matter how far apart they may be. Otherwise, they can't know each other even face to face. Being able to meet everyone here is the luck cultivated for a hundred years. You are coming all the way over to China as a propagator of Chinese culture and a tourist receptionist. I would like to welcome you to China, to Beijing. China is an Asian country with vast territory, abundant resources, uh, a large population and a long history. You will greatly benefit from your visit. We have another proverb. You can correct your dress and crown if you take brass as mirror. You will understand the gain of loss if you take people as mirror. You may know the rise and decline if you take history as mirror. What does this mean? It means if you take mirror and look at it, you can correct your dressing to make yourself look cleaner and smarter. Go out and observe and experience other people's life. You may understand yourself better. Look at the development and the changes of a city and uh, learn about what happened in the past. You may know the trends of our society and uh, even get the ability to further far-sightedness and uh, the world knowledge. Therefore, we go out to travel, go to the nature to cultivate sentiment, to the historical town and famous cities to open up our horizons. Uh, another proverb, read thousands of books and travel thousands of miles. When traveling, we are walking in the encyclopedia of the world. Beijing is very big. It has an area of 16,410 square kilometers. There are many places to go and your time is limited. Uh, mostly, you mostly only have one to five days. Where are the right places to go? This is a question that my guests often ask me. I also get questions about uh, accommodation and transportation. Which section of the Great Wall should I go to? And uh, what is the best use of my time in Beijing, etc. Mm, a lot of content. I can't tell everything in a short message. Um, through brief text introduction, it is not easy for you to understand. So next, in order to improve work and uh, communication efficiency on the six major aspects of travel, uh, food, accommodation, places to go, shopping, and uh, entertainment. I will give you a brief introduction mainly on uh, places to go and what to do. First of all, Beijing is a well-known oriental city with a long history and a splendid culture. It has more than 3,000 years history as a city and 860 years history as a capital, which leaves behind a large number of historic and cultural relics. This humanistic landscape contains a nation's traditions, history, and culture, which are the windows for you to learn about a nation and its people. It should be made the major destinations for your travel. Secondly, Beijing is also the capital of China. It is the center of national politics, culture, economy, education, scientific and technological innovation, and international communication. It has many functional areas, many museums contemporary cultural landscapes and characteristic streets, such as Zhongguancun Science and Technology Park, Haibian Higher Education District, Beijing Financial Street, Central Business District, Sanlitun Embassy Areas, 
Olympic Green, etc. Its city planning is also different from other cities. These places will give you a fuller understanding of the city. Moreover, residential areas, streets, and parks are the places for citizens to live and entertain themselves in their daily life. These are the places where you can learn about the locals' lifestyle and their spiritual outlook and city culture. Suburban villages can also give you an understanding of Beijing rural development and local people's life. The itinerary design can focus on the historic and cultural relics. Places for the citizens to live and entertain themselves in their daily life are the second uh, priority. Design driving routes for the city sightseeing along the way so that you can have a general understanding of Beijing's geographical characteristics, history and uh, development, cities change, nightlife, transportation, education, housing, etc. To enrich your traveling experience, you can choose some Chinese cultural experience activities, such as playing Tai Ji Quan, a cricket and grasshopper performance, tea ceremony, have some classes to learn uh, cooking Chinese dishes, calligraphy, and so on. At night, you can watch some traditional performances. Schedule should be made based on seasons, weekdays or weekend, and uh, weather condition to arrange travel time reasonably to improve your traveling experience. Beijing has four distinct seasons. The sunrise and the sunset times are different in different seasons. Uh, temperature are different in the morning and uh, at noon in summer. Traveling experience can be very different at a different time. For example, in autumn, it's often foggy in the morning. Visibility is very low, sometimes only 10 to 20 meters far. Visit to the Great Wall should avoid being arranged in the morning. But at noon, when the temperature is the highest, otherwise what you can see on the Great Wall will be just like this. In summer, it's super hot at noon. The temperature is generally over 35 degrees Celsius. The ground temperature is generally over 50 degrees Celsius. It's better to start off as early as possible. It's cool in the morning and the light is soft, very enjoyable. Around noon, it's super hot. It's better to avoid outdoor walking. Uh, activities indoors or in shaded areas is better for afternoon. Night is also a good time for summer. What are the historic and cultural relics in Beijing? First of all, uh, let's take a look at the imperial palace, gardens, temples, and cemeteries. In the long history of China, for thousands of years, sovereigns ruled the world. Imperial power was the absolute authority. In accordance with this, a set of social etiquette systems and norms that emphasized the supremacy of emperors were bound to permeate into all political rituals, living rules, and the living conditions related to the royal family, which are manifested in the so-called royal style. Royal palaces, gardens, altar and temples, and cemeteries all have specific specifications and styles different from folk architecture. Royal culture is a unique feature of the Asian capital, Beijing. Uh, I recommend eight places for you. First, the Forbidden City is the royal palace of the Ning and the Qing dynasties. It was the place where emperors lived with their queens and concubines, held meetings and um, handled government affairs. It was built between 1406 and 1420. 24 emperors once lived and ruled inside. It was the highest center of power in China for more than five centuries. The Forbidden City is the largest and the most intact palace complex in China. 
It is the epitome of palace architecture in the past dynasties. It is also the only living example and the highest model in the development history of Asian Chinese palace. It represents the highest level of official architecture in nation China in terms of architecture, technology, and art. Here you can visit the square where the emperors held grand celebrations, the place where the ministers uh, had an audience with the emperors in the early days, uh, the palaces where the empresses and the concubines lived, lived, and the delicate imperial garden, and the place where the two empress dowagers of the late Qing dynasty attended to state affairs behind curtain. By the visit, you can learn about ancient Chinese court life, uh, rituals and customs, and uh, strict hierarchy, and a changing history of the old imperial city. Uh, you can appreciate the exquisite architecture, the layout, specifications, architectural decoration, uh, traditional patterns, color paintings, couplets, and interior and exterior furnishings of the palace all embody the Confucian ideals. A feudal ritual system, yin yang five elements theory, and aesthetic concept. They contain profound political and cultural significance. Through the visit, you will have better understanding of the Eastern civilization. The Forbidden City is a treasure house full of fine arts and crafts, showing the art treasures of various dynasties in China. Each piece of um, artifact is condensed with the wisdom and superb labor achievements of Chinese nation, and fully shows the outstanding talents of the Chinese nation. You will see the broadness and steadiness of history through the vicissitudes of cultural relics. The Forbidden City is 961 meters from north to south. 753 meters from east to west, with a total area of 0.72 square kilometers. There were four gates, usually only one entrance, the south gate, and one exit, the north gate. It mainly consists of the inner court and the outer court. Um, there are three visit routes, east, middle, and west route. It can take a day to visit all the places inside. Usually, uh, I suggest two hours for the visit. Um, it is located north of the Tiananmen Square. To reasonably use time, we usually arrange the visit to the Tiananmen Square and Forbidden City together. Our walking distance is three kilometers. The visit will take about three hours. Royal gardens in Beijing played an important role in the political life of emperors. They do not only have aesthetic value, but also historic value. There are more than 10 royal gardens in Beijing. I recommend three. The Summer Palace, Jinshan Park, and the Beihai Park. Built in 1750, the Summer Palace was the summer resort for the Empress Dowager of the Qing Dynasty. At the end of Qing Dynasty, the Summer Palace became the main residence of China's supreme ruler and the most important center of political and diplomatic activities outside the Forbidden City. Empress Dowager Cixi and Emperor Guangxu held court, issued a decrees, and received foreign guests here. He has witnessed many uh, important historical events in the modern history of China. The garden is the most beautiful one of the royal gardens in the Qing dynasty. At that time, Emperor Qianlong personally selected the site and participated in the design of the gardens and architecture and the selection of furnishings. Because of his infatuation with the scenery in the south of the middle and the lower reaches of the Yangtze River, which is called Jiangnan, on the east side of the West Mountains, uh, based on the west lake of Hangzhou, 
he draw on the design techniques of Jiangnan Gardens, enlarged the original lake and created landscape and built this large scale landscape garden. It does not only have magnificent atmosphere of the northern gardens, but also have the beautiful appearance of the Jiangnan Gardens. So it is regarded as one of the four famous gardens in China. There you can feel the charm of traditional Chinese gardens. The Summer Palace is uh, four times the size of the Forbidden City. It is 1.9 kilometers from east to west and 2.4 kilometers from north to south. There, were, uh, there are seven gates. You can visit the garden for a day. A quick visit will just take 40 minutes. To visit most of the places, it takes five hours. I generally recommend a tour for two hours. Another recommended royal garden is Jingshan Park, located north of the Forbidden City, which used to be a royal garden of the Ming and the Qing dynasties. It was also a place to place the deceased emperors and empresses' coffins before burial and store their portraits. And it was also a place for the emperors to worship their ancestors. The top of the Jingshan Hill in the park is the best place to overlook Beijing and watch the sunset. Standing on the top of the hill, you will have a clear view of the entire Forbidden City, the Imperial City, and a historic city, the Old Quarter. Uh, the palace complex is magnificent, majestic, and shocking. Looking around, you can also take a decent view of the White Pagoda. Zhongnanhai, China's Central Television Tower, Drum Tower, Pangu Plaza, Nail Building, Citic Tower, tall buildings in CBD, and other beautiful views. There you can experience a kind of heroic feeling of a sovereign going up on the high platform and inspecting and commanding hundreds of officials on it. The sunset was spectacular and dreamy when the weather was fine. When a sun slowly converged its dazzling light, the distant mountains, towers, lakes, all are dressed in golden clothing. The classical gardens and the modern city are fused together, bathed in a golden light. Swallows joyously circling in the sky. The Oriental Garden presents a beautiful, peaceful, mysterious, and intoxicating picture in a setting sun as exquisite as a fairy tale, and as delightful as a dream. Here will certainly give you a good memory. The other one is Beihai Park. It is just located west of Jingshan Park. Built in the 12th century, it used to be a royal pavilion in the Liao, Qing and Yuan dynasties. In the Ming and the Qing dynasties, it was used as a royal garden. It is one of the oldest, um, the most intact and the most comprehensive and representative royal gardens in China. The White Pagoda on the island stands quietly in a sunset, which brought beautiful memories to countless people. Jingshan Park is not big, only 490 meters from east to west. The hill is only 45 meters high. After watching the sunset on the Jingshan Hill, you can go on visiting Beihai Park. Its night view is also good. The walking distance is about 1,700 meters. Another representative of Beijing's royal culture is the royal temples. The royal temples in Beijing mainly include nine orders and eight temples. The nine orders were places where the Ming and the Qing emperors worshipped gods to pray for good harvest and for blessing the people. The orders are mainly dedicated to the gods of the heaven and earth, sun and moon, stars, rain, mountains and seas, rivers and lakes, some natural phenomena and other gods. 
emperor's worship on time to pray for the abundance of grain and good weather for the crops. The eight temples mainly offer sacrifices to the ancestors of the royal family, as well as the emperors and famous ministers in the past dynasties, great teacher Confucius, and the gods of Lamaism, the state religion of the Qin dynasty. Its purpose is also to hope the soul of the ancestors, the past great teacher, and the ancient emperors in heaven bless their rural stable and eternal, and help them turn calamities into blessings and avoid misfortunes. At the same time, it is also a means to educate officials and deceive the people. I recommend three royal temples. Uh, the Temple of Heaven, Yonghe Gong Lama Temple, and the Confucius Temple, and Guo Zijian. First, the Temple of Heaven was the biggest royal temple in Beijing. It was the place where the emperors of the Ming and the Qing dynasties worshipped the heaven and prayed for good harvest and rain. Built between 1406 and 1420, it was mainly dedicated to the God of Heaven, the ancestors of the Qing emperors, the gods of sun and moon, stars, and the gods of wind, thunder, cloud, and rain. It is the world's largest extant ancient outer buildings with the most complete shape and structure. Um, the Temple of Heaven is the last carrier of celestial sacrifice system. What can you see here? There are four major order building complexes. The order for praying for good harvest, the palace for emperors to fast before sacrifice, and a palace for musicians to study and practice ceremonial music. You can appreciate the exquisite altar buildings and a solemn, primitive and plain and a secret altar environment. The planning and the layout of these buildings are very rigorous. From the form, color to structure, all have profound implications and condense the traditional philosophy of China. You can also test three uh, acoustic phenomena personally. Heavenly heart stone, echo wall, and a triple soundstone. And you can also visit four exhibitions uh, worship, etiquette, ceremonial music, great sacrifice, and an architectural art of the Hall of Prayer for Good Harvest. Uh, from the visit, you will learn the ancient Chinese view of the universe, nature worship, ancestor worship ancestral culture and the significance of the worship of heaven, from which you can trace the characteristics of Chinese culture and Chinese national character and tradition. The Temple of Heaven is also the biggest park in the old city of Beijing. The air is fresh and the ground is open. It attracts the inhabitants around to come here for recreation. Here you can see the retired local residents engaged in a variety of recreational and social activities such as playing tai chi, shuttlecock, singing, dancing, playing music instruments, playing checkers, poker, and mahjong, knitting sweaters, and so on. Some are extremely leisurely and some full of excitement. Dating market is open here regularly every week. It provides an opportunity for lonely people to find their partners. Here you can learn playing taiji ball, kick shuttlecock, dance with the locals, chat with them to feel the fun of their life. The Temple of Heaven is big. The park has an area of 2.05 square kilometers, 1,700 meters from east to west, and 1,600 meters from north to south. If you visit all of the four other building complexes, it will take four hours at least. I suggest you visit two of the building complexes selectively, two others or the Abdin's Palace and uh, the Altar of Prayer for Good Harvest. It will take about two hours. For a quick visit to the park, 
40 minutes is enough. Yong Hogong Lama Temple was the first royal temple of the Qing Dynasty and the biggest Tibetan Buddhist temple in Beijing. It is very special. It is different from other temples in function. Built in 1694, it was once used as a prince palace and a royal pavilion successively. Two emperors lived there in the Qing Dynasty. It was later transformed into a temple and it became the center where the Qing government handled Tibetan Buddhist affairs throughout the country, which had served as a medium for closing relations between the central government and the border regions. It played a, an important role in safeguarding the stability of the border areas and a national unity and strengthening national solidarity in the history of the Qing Dynasty. With yellow tiles and a red wall, it has the same specification as the royal palace. The temple has a rich collection of Tibetan Buddhist relics, such as vividly sculptured uh, Buddhist statues, Tibetan style paintings known as Tanka, murals, Buddhist scripture rolls, religious instruments and vessels, and so on. Many of them were uh, specially made for the royal family with high historical and cultural value. Uh, uh, here is known as Tibetan Buddhist Museum. It is a good choice if you are interested in Buddhist culture, art, and history. This temple is not big, only 400 meters from north to south, uh, 93 meters from east to west, uh, only have seven courtyards. For a quick visit, 30 minutes is enough. Buddhist temples are the places for enlightenment. Uh, all the visible objects and uh, rituals are given edifying meanings. So if you want to learn more, it will take more time from one to five hours. So I generally I suggest 1.5 to 2 hours. Confucius Temple and Guozi Jian are two groups of buildings next to each other, built in the Yuan Dynasty in 1306. The Confucius Temple used to be a special place for the emperors of the Yuan, Ming, and Qing dynasties to worship Confucius. It is one of the four major Confucius temples in China. On the west side of the Confucius Temple is Guozi Jian. It was the highest administrative organ that state managed education with in the three dynasties of China, Yuan, Ming, and Qing dynasties, and the highest academy set up by the state to train officials. It was also the place where the emperors lectured. Confucius Temple and the Guozi Jian is not big, only 225 meters from east to west and 290 meters from north to south. It generally takes uh, one and a half hours to two hours for a visit. What can you see here? Firstly, you can see the Grand Hall for the Ceremony of Confucius, Da Cheng Hall, and the classroom where the emperors lectured, Bi Yong Hall. Secondly, you can visit the learning environment and the the classrooms where the best students from all over the country studied in the past, learn the study contents and the teaching methods in old days. Thirdly, you can visit the stone inscriptions uh, in the Confucius Temple Jing Shi monuments, um, Qianlong stone drums, 13 Confucian scripture stele forests, and and stately pavilions of the Ming and the Qing dynasties. Uh, fourthly, you can see some exhibitions. From this, you will learn the ancient Chinese educational system and the Confucius culture. Another representative of royal culture is the royal cemetery. The ancient Chinese believed that 
the feng shui or Germanic omen of ancestral graves was very important to the good or ill luck of future generations. So people attached great importance to the construction of their deceased family's graves. In the past, there were certain limits on the specifications of the graves of the people at a different status levels. The emperor's tombs usually occupied a very large area and have the highest building specifications. The location and the layout was very particular. The royal cemetery emphasizes Chinese funeral culture, ancestral culture, filial piety culture, and feng shui theory. I recommend the Ming tombs. It was a royal cemetery of the Ming dynasty. The Ming tombs was built in 1409, about 51 kilometers from the city center, the Tiananmen Square. It covers a total area of 120 square kilometers. There are 13 emperors, 23 empresses, two princes, over 30 concubines, two eunuchs buried inside. It is the largest royal cemetery in the world. It was listed as UNESCO World Heritage Sites in 2003. The main tombs is a representative work of Yang Gong Feng Shui. The site selection was given a great deal of attention. The Chinese emperor tried very hard to find a successor of Yang Gong Feng Shui, and then it took three years to choose this eternal long life land. This land is surrounded by mountains covered with dense vegetation. In the center is a small open basin with an area of 40 square kilometers. Rivers and streams converge in the center of the basin, wind towards the east and empty into a lake. Each tomb was built with a hill behind and rivers before. The geographical environment is spectacular, quiet and secluded. From here you can learn about Chinese feng shui culture and the impact of feng shui on our real life. Of the 13 imperial tombs, um, there are three open to visitors. One is Changling, which is the first emperor buried in the Ming tombs. The Changling is the largest and the best preserved tomb of the Ming tombs. Inside are exhibited the tomb owner Zhu Li's life stories and achievements introduction, as well as some cultural relics unearthed from another tomb, Dingling. One is the tomb of the seventh emperor of the Ming dynasty. Most of the buildings on the ground in the Ming tombs were destroyed during wars. Zhao Ling is a restored one. It has a complete architectural form and layout. There are offerings and tables and other furnishings in the Lingheng Hall, as well as an exhibition of the uh, sacrificial system. I recommend Emperor Wan Li's tomb, Ding Ling. It is the only imperial tomb excavated by the archaeology department of Chinese government. You can enter the underground palace to visit the palace where the emperor and empresses were buried and visit their funeral objects. Through the tomb's layout and specifications, buildings, decorative art and functions, the underground palace and emperor and empresses' funeral objects and the tomb's owner's life stories, uh, you can learn about the strict feudal hierarchy in ancient China, uh, royal life, burial system, and Chinese viewpoints of life and death. You can also learn about the improved and strict tomb sacrificial system and understand Chinese customs of worshipping ancestors, sacrificial functions and its significance for the transformation of the living. We mainly drive around in a cemetery and see the scenery along the way in the car and only visit the secret way and one imperial tomb. It takes about uh, two and a half an hour to three hours. Of this size, there are four UNESCO World Heritage Sites, the Forbidden City, the Temple of Heaven, the Summer Palace, and the Ming Tombs. Um, the Temple of Heaven, the Jingshan Park, Beihai Park, and the Summer Palace are also open as parks. There you can get a feel for um, the leisure lifestyle of the local people.
Beijing has six major UNESCO World Heritage Sites in total. I have just mentioned four. Another one is the world-famous Great Wall of China. There are several famous sections in and around Beijing. I recommend starting with Badaling, Mu Tianyu, and Jing Shanling. Among them, Badaling and Mu Tianyu are about 75 kilometers from the city center, the Tiananmen Square. One-way drive takes about one and a half an hour. Closer to the urban city, you can arrange more places to visit for a day. Jing Shanling is 155 kilometers. It is twice the distance. A one-way drive takes about two hours and ten minutes and is usually scheduled for one day. All three sections of the Great Wall have their own characteristics. The Badaling Great Wall is built in a 20 kilometer long valley. There were four barriers in the valley. A military stronghold outside the south end of the valley and the other military fortifications outside the Great Wall, such as courier stations, outposts, forts, and so on. Since ancient times, this has been a throat of North Beijing, entering and leaving Beijing. The Badaling Great Wall has a very important military strategic position and was built here as early as in the Han Dynasty 2,100 years ago. Its remains has been preserved till today. Overall, the mountain terrain is relatively smooth and complex. The wall was built tall and strong, and the watchtowers were densely distributed. From both sides of the pass extends the Great Wall, uh, zigzagging up and down the mountains. The section at the Badaling is one of the best Great Wall architectures, combining sublime, precipitous, gentle, and beautiful parts. This magnificent wall stretches and winds through the mountains towards the north and the south before fading out of view into the distance. Badaling Great Wall was officially opened to visitors in 1953, making it the earliest section of the Great Wall open to visitors. The Great Wall is the symbol of national defense and the friendship of the people of the world. Badaling Great Wall has become a place to receive state guests. Many heads of states and the celebrities left their images here. Here you can also visit the Great Wall Museum and gain a comprehensive understanding of the Great Wall of China. Mu Tianyu Great Wall was built in the mountains in the north of Beijing. Since ancient times, it had served as the north barrier of the royal cemetery and the capital. Mu Tianyu's average attitude is high and the mountains deep. The Great Wall was built on the top of high mountains known for ruggedness and steepness. The western a uh, section of Mu Tianyu is precipitous. Most sections haven't been renovated and not, not been open to tourists. Eagle flying upside down, Jian Kou, Ox Horn Edge are the famous landscape. It is full of wild interest but very challenging. It is a classic route for outdoor trekking. The eastern section of Mu Tianyu was opened after renovation. It is the main section for sightseeing. Except for the two sides of Zheng Guan Tai are steep. Most section is relatively smooth. The road surface is flat, easy for walk. By contrast, its trend is single, lack of the feeling of winding ups and downs, twists and turns. Jing Shanling Great Wall is located in the northeast of Beijing, in Luanping County, Chengde, Hebei Province, 155 kilometers from the Tiananmen Square. 
Jin Shanling has lower terrain than wide field of vision because the terrain here is low. The wall was built very thick and solid. The fortresses and watchtowers are uh, densely built. Here, the watchtowers and gun batteries were built every 60 to 100 meters generally. It is a characteristic of this section of the Great Wall. Each watchtower has its own characteristics and style. And here has perfect military fortifications. Uh, the Great Wall is equipped with barrier walls, uh, combat platforms, gun batteries, stone missile holes, air vents, horse barriers, branch walls, etc. Set up uh, defense works layer by layer. This is what the other sections of the Great Wall do not have. Jin Shanling is also characterized by its tremendous momentum. The Great Wall winds ups and downs in the Yan Mountain, high and low, twists and turns, and disappears at the end of the earth. The section of the Great Wall from Jin Shanling to Sumatai is known as the most photogenic part of the Great Wall. It is partly renovated and partly maintained with a broken, original look. The scenery at Jin Shanling is the most magnificent. The sunrise and sunset, the clouds after rain and rainbows in summer and autumn have become a major landscape of Jin Shanling. It's very suitable for hiking and photography, known as the paradise of the photographers. You'd better check the weather forecast before start and then choose the right departure time. In terms of the number of tourists, Jin Shanling Great Wall is not touristy at any time. During holidays and school vacations and at weekends, Ba Da Ling Great Wall is very crowded, and Mu Tian Yu is less crowded in the morning. Uh, there are much less people in the afternoon. If you go to these two sections, it's better to go in the early morning or in the afternoon. During weekdays, the two sections are less touristy. Mu Tian Yu is always less touristy than Ba Da Ling. When you come to Beijing, you cannot leave without going to the Tiananmen Square. It is the number one Marseille place of Beijing. Um, the Tiananmen Square is the heart of China. The Tiananmen Gate Tower is the symbol of the capital Beijing and also the symbol of China. Its image is part of China's national emblem. The monument to the people's heroes stands in the center of the square, surrounded by many significant buildings and gardens, such as China Mount Memorial Hall, the Great Hall of the People, China National Museum, uh, Tiananmen Gate Tower, Zhongshan Park, Walking People's Cultural Palace, National Center for the Performing Arts, and so on. Over the, over the past 100 years, here has been the place where numerous major political and historical events took place. It has witnessed many historical moments documenting the indomitable revolutionary spirit and fearless heroism of the Chinese people. On October 1st, 1949, Chairman Mao declared the founding of the People's Republic of China on a Tiananmen Gate Tower. Now it becomes a main venue for major festivals and celebrations in China. It is a historical witness of China's decline to rise. Uh, now people here watch national flag raising and lowering ceremony, listen to the national anthem, watch the five star flag flying uh, in the wind, pay homage to the monument to the people's heroes, and visit the National Museum of China. This place has become a famous patriotic educational base, a secret place for people to cherish memory of martyrs and to pay their respect to heroes. The north of Tiananmen Square is the Imperial City. The Forbidden City is inside. We usually put a visit to the square and the Forbidden City together because the distance is around 3 kilometers.
in addition to the royal palace, gardens, and temples, the architectural relics of the Yuan, Ming, and Qing dynasties also include the traditional residences in the old city, which is also an important part of Beijing's cultural heritage and unique features. These traditional residential areas are the living place of common people in Beijing and a stage of historical and cultural development. They recorded the changes of history and social life and the folk customs of old Beijingers. Uh, Beijing traditional residential area is abbreviated as Hutong. There are 33 Hutong reserves in the old city of Beijing. Each has its own characteristics. I recommend four, Shi Cha Hai, Bei Luo Gu Xiang, Nan Luo Gu Xiang, and Xian Yu Kou. Uh, Shi Cha Hai area is a traditional residential area with the most beautiful natural environment. It includes three lakes, Qian Hai, Hou Hai, and Xi Hai. 700 years ago in the Yuan Dynasty, the construction of the new capital centered around here. The central axis of the new capital was determined on the east shore based on this water area. Since then, Shi Cha Hai has become the core of the Yuan, Ming, and Qing dynasties, urban planning and water system. It is also a well-known place for spending summer and for spawn in old Beijing. It used to be the end of the water transport of the capital. Countless ships from uh, the south were docked here. The Anmen North Street has always been a bustling shopping street. As a result of the beautiful scenery, Shi Cha Hai accumulated profound culture of various social strata up to the royal kingship and the, the literati down to the ordinary people after hundreds of years of development. Today, Shi Cha Hai area has a large number of typical hutong and uh, some local inhabitants have lived here for many generations. There are more than a dozen former residences of historic celebrities preserved in this area, as well as prince palaces and temples. The famous former residences of historical celebrities open to visitors include Prince Gong's Palace, the Garden of Prince Chun's Palace, um, and Guo Mo Ruo former residences, and so on. This area is still a commercial area. Around Shanghai, there are various bars, restaurants, and shops. Here is a resort for people to enjoy leisure, feel history, and enjoy fashion. Another reserve is the Bei Luo Gu Xiang Hutong Reserve. This reserve is next to Shi Cha Hai area. The Beijing Bell Tower and Drum Tower stands inside. This area has less commercial atmosphere and is quiet and livable, making it different from Shi Cha Hai area. Nan Luo Gu Xiang is the oldest residential area in Beijing, built in the Yuan Dynasty 700 years ago. It includes a north-south main street and 14 east-west alleyways, 800 meters from north to south and 1,100 meters from east to west, nearly one square kilometer. Uh, this area attracts lots of visitors. Till today, the main street has become a shopping street. Changxiang and the Caochang Hutong area in Xian Yukou reserves is one of the three Hutong reserves in the outer city. It was built according to the trend of ancient river courses. Nearly 100 guild halls were located here in the Ming and Qing dynasties, which was the gathering place of the people who lived and worked in Beijing from other regions in those years. 
this Hutong area is the only Hutong area that runs uh, north to south in Beijing. In the past, the private constructions were carelessly built here without permission. The houses and roads were dilapidated. After protective renovation, the style of the late Qing Dynasty and the Republic of China was restored. The infrastructure has been greatly updated. The convenience facilities, fitness and leisure venues, and the green space areas have been increased. The Sanli He River has been restored. The living environment here has taken on a new look and become a beautiful and livable residential area, which is a model for the protection and the transformation of the style and features of Beijing traditional residential areas. Here you can feel the changes of the times and the good life of the residents in today's hutongs. What can you do in the hutong resorts? You can take a walk in the alleyways, chat with the inhabitants, feel the simple and warm neighborhood living environment of the old Beijing. Get a feel for the traditional way of life in the alleyways and feel the quiet and idle happiness inside. You can take traditional transport, try shop, browse the traditional civil residences with different styles and specifications, enjoy the scenery along the lake, and listen to the anecdotes of the local celebrities. A try shop with bronze bell jingling all the way. The driver in traditional clothes takes you to shuttle back and forth in the old alleyways. It has a different flavor as if time had returned to the old days. You can also walk into the residence of ordinary inhabitants, visit the Si He Yuan and chat with the owners and feel the people's lifestyle in the past. Through the visit, you can understand the cultural connotation of the Si He Yuan and uh, the local customs, as well as um, conceptual and material changes that reform and opening up has brought to the common people. Even you can taste the home dishes cooked by the master if you order ahead of time. You can also go to the courtyard to feel the social events organized by wealthy families in the past, Peng Hui. There you can take a short rest in the courtyard, sip tea and snacks, and watch the unique skills of Chinese folk performance with other guests and cheer the performers. Cricket and grasshopper used to be a very popular pet in Beijing. Today you can listen to the local senior cricket player introduce uh, these little clever insects with good sound and uh, play with them. You can also climb the drum tower, take a bird's eye view of Hutong reserves on both sides of the city central axis and I take a look at the ancient capitals look at a different angle. You can visit the timing tools and the timing methods and watch the traditional drum beating performance. Besides the traditional living quarters, traditional shopping streets were also people's living places. They recorded the city's economic development, history, and the change of people's lifestyles. It's a good place for you to experience city culture. For traditional shopping streets, I recommend four. Qianmen Street area, Liulichang Cultural Street, Wang Fujing Street, and Gui Street. Qianmen Street area is a business district of traditional architectural style. It includes a number of shopping streets. Qianmen Street has a long history of 600 years. It's um, 1,600 meters long. It used to be an imperial road for the emperors to go from the city to the Temple of Heaven and other royal temples in the south of the city. Because it is located outside the main gate of the capital, the street has evolved into a busy shopping street in old Beijing, as well as the eternal streets on both sides, mostly in the style of Chinese and Western architecture a hundred years ago. Uh, here you can visit many time-honored shops, 
restaurants, old shopping streets, wine and pickle workshops, baths, department stores, uh, escort agencies, banks, old Beijing financial streets, uh, hotels, guild halls, theaters, tea houses, brothels, and some other places for old business. You can try all kinds of snacks. Uh, specialties and uh, delicacies, and you can taste the original flavor of old Beijing, feel Beijing's city life and the changes of the times. Uh, Da Shla is the epitome, essence, and origin of Beijing culture, and the most important commercial center of Beijing in the Ming and Qing dynasties. Here, witnessed the formation and uh, development of Beijing Opera. Here, there have been numerous theaters and guild halls, many masters, uh, dignitaries, uh, common people, cultural and intellectual figures and officials gathered here. Here you can see Beijing's earliest financial street. It has a complete financial industry chain consisting of a uh, furnace house, old bank streets in uh, Qian Shi Hutong and Shijia Hutong, banks in Xi He Yan, and escort agencies. Here is also the converge of the culture industry. Bookstores, newspaper, publishing got flourished here. We will cross three historic and cultural protected areas in the in the outer city. Xian Yu Kou, Da Shla, and Liu Li Chang. Liu Li Chang Cultural Street is a well-known cultural street with a history of nearly 400 years. In the Qing Dynasty, it was a place where officials, first grade scholars, literati, actors, and artists lived together. There were many shops selling books, uh, Chinese brushes, seals, and inkstones here, forming a strong cultural atmosphere. This distribution area has continued till today. Now it sells books, uh, calligraphy and paintings, antiques, ink and ink stones, Chinese brushes, seal engraving, calligraphy and painting mounting. Many artists and uh, calligraphers open studios and galleries here. Here you can watch uh, on-spot painting and calligraphy and uh, the making process of Chinese brushes and woodblock painting. You can learn about traditional Chinese painting and calligraphy art. For the people who are interested in Chinese uh, traditional culture and art, here is the best place. The street is about 760 meters long, west to Chairman Street area. Uh, the visit can be arranged together with Chairman Street area. With a total length of 1,880 meters, Wang Fujing Street is an international central shopping street with a history of 100 years. Full of modern atmosphere, high grade and high standard, it has gathered many well-known global brand stores, big shopping malls, state-owned brands, and time-owned brands and hotels. It enjoys a reputation of Gold Street in Beijing. About Food Street, uh, Beijing cuisine has a long history and distinctive features. More than a dozen gourmet streets have been formed, of which I recommend uh, Green Street, Wang Fujin Snack Street, and Xin Yu Kou Gourmet Street. Green Street is a restaurant street. It's a very good place to showcase Chinese gourmet food. The street is over one kilometer long with more than 150 business premises, of which 90% are in catering industry. We can't find a second street with such a restaurant density in Beijing. Hot and spicy crab, hot and spicy crayfish, hot and spicy frog are the most popular food here. When you come here at night, the bustling lights of Great Street will certainly make you feel another charm of Beijing.
in addition to places of interest, you can also go to the museums and the fashion blocks for a walk. Beijing is the cultural center with 129 museums. If you want to know the history of China, you can go to China National Museum. If you want to know the history of Beijing, you can go to the Capital Museum. And if you want to know the future development plan of Beijing, you can go to uh, Beijing uh, Planning Exhibition Hall. If you want to see the fashion and the modern blocks of Beijing, you can go to uh, 798 Contemporary Art District. Uh, Stanley Tun Taikuli in Walker Stadium Business District and the place or Selena in the World Trade uh, Business District. Olympic Square is also a good place to go. It is a square in Beijing Olympic Green. The Olympic Green is the main venue for the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games with 10 Olympic venues inside. Olympic Green covers an area of 11 square kilometers. The square is surrounded by bird's nest, water cube, a Linglong Tower, National Indoor Stadium, uh, conference center and uh, Olympic Tower, Pangu Plaza, and other venues and buildings. Among them, the National Stadium, a bird's nest, and a water cube are two iconic buildings of the two uh, of of the 29th Beijing Olympic Games. The opening and closing ceremony, track and field uh, competition, and football finals were held here during Beijing Olympic Games and the 13th uh, Paralympic Games. After the Olympic Games, here becomes a comprehensive, large-scale place involving culture and sports, fitness and shopping, catering and entertainment, uh, tourism exhibition and other functions. It has become a landmark sports, architecture and Olympic heritage. If you have the time, you can visit some famous buildings, such as the Great Hall of the People, the National Center for the Performing Arts, China National Library, and so on. You can also visit university campuses and learn about Chinese universities' life at places like Beijing University, and Tsinghua University, etc. In addition, a city next to Beijing, Tianjin, is worth a visit. Tianjin is a peaceful, well-designed city with very interesting architecture. Uh, the city has a history of more than 600 years. It is the cradle of the modern industry of China and it has an important position in the modern history of China. It is now uh, one of the four major municipalities directly under the central government in China. You can take a high-speed train to Tianjin from Beijing. It only takes 30 minutes. To enrich your traveling experience, you can choose some Chinese cultural experience activities. Uh, what you can do if you are interested in Chinese culinary culture, you can take a cooking class to learn about the main eight Chinese cuisine's features and learn cooking some Chinese local uh, snacks and dishes. If you are interested in Chinese tea culture, you can taste Chinese tea and uh, watch a tea ceremony. You will learn about the classification of Chinese tea and the characteristics of different types of tea, as well as their brewing methods and taste. If you are interested in 
uh, traditional Chinese games or sports, you can learn play Taiji boxing or the Ablo and some, uh, some other games. After a long day walk, you may want to relax by watching a traditional performance at night. The characteristic classic ones are Beijing Opera, Kung Fu, Acrobatics, Singing and Dancing. Okay, we have talked about so many places, things, and events. We need a review. <laughs>